Hi, my name is Rostislav Zinko and I would like to introduce the Building Databases with Redis video course to you. During this course we will walk through the very basics of the interaction using the Redis database to complex data structures, database design decisions and use cases. So, let me start with a small introduction to Redis. Redis is a database based on key-value storage. It means that it does not have tables and a predefined scheme like the classical relational databases have, for example MySQL or PostgreSQL. At the same time, it does not allow us to store complex multi-level documents like the popular NoSQL database MongoDB does. Redis operates using keys and values and this data type is usually called the hash table or dictionary in other programming languages. So basically the whole Redis database is just a mapping of string keys, which are unique throughout the database, to the corresponding values that can be of string, list, set or hash data types, all of which we will discuss throughout this course. At a glance it seems that only the simplest things can be done with such a simple storage design but there are techniques and tricks that allow you to use Redis as the main storage for your applications. Another positive side of such a structure is the blazing fast speed in the execution of queries. This is the reason why information technology industry giants such as Twitter, Stack Overflow, GitHub, Flickr, Microsoft Azure and others use Redis for their needs. So, let's start by getting the Redis project from its home, located at redis.io. First of all, we have to visit the Downloads tab on the website and choose 3.0 version of Redis to download. Redis supports only OS X and Linux platforms officially, but you can scroll down and follow the instructions if you would like to install Redis for Windows. We will use Redis version 3.0 during the course. Though this version is not yet stable, it incorporates all the features of the current stable Redis version and also offers new features that will be available soon in a stable state. After downloading the archive, we have to build the project manually from source. Unfortunately, the Redis project does not have ready to use binaries. In order to perform this, we will open our terminal, move to the folder where we have the unarchived Redis source and run the make command, which becomes available as soon as we install the Xcode and Xcode developer tools from the Apple App Store. Now it will take some time to compile and link all the components of the Redis distribution and we're interested in two of them, Redis Server and Redis Client. When the building process is complete, we are ready to use the newly installed software, the binaries we need for now, namely Redis Server and Redis CLI, are located inside the SRC subfolder of the current folder in which we built Redis. So the next thing we have to do now is start the Redis database server by running SRC slash Redis Server. After entering this in command line, you will see a small greeting and server log in your terminal window. Redis uses a simple configuration file to get the initial server settings, but it is also available to configure the server in runtime directly via Redis commands, which we will cover in section 2. So, once we have the server up and running, we can move to the next checkpoint, connecting to the server and executing commands. In order to get access to the server, which works through its own network protocol, we have to run the client, which is the SRC slash Redis CLI application. Let's open another terminal tab and type this in it to start our client that automatically establishes connection to the server. If everything is working correctly, we will see a prompt that consists of the server IP address and port. This means that a connection is established and we are ready to run commands. Note that we are using the client on the same machine on which the Redis server is installed. However, if you have a Redis instance running on a remote machine, 
you have to specify the host to connect to using the "-h command line option. Let's type exit to finish the client session and use this option to connect to the server, in my case it is localhost. As you can see it worked, except that the prompt text was changed. In this video we downloaded and installed the Redis server and you learned how to use the client to make a connection to the server. We also performed our first command called exit to stop the Redis client gracefully. In the next video we will take the first steps in data manipulation in general and you will learn how to get and set values for keys in particular. We will also start discussing a simple wiki application built with the Python language and the Redis database at the main storage.